Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. It is the weekend vlog. It is a little before 8 a.m. We are already rocking and rolling this weekend. And it's the end of February. And I told you all that I was like really trying to get to the end of February. And I can honestly say that it feels like a little air has been left out of the balloon. I feel like I could breathe a little bit more. I feel like I can sleep a little bit better. And I'm just feeling better in general. And then in all honesty, that better feeling, I'm feeling really inspired and really excited to do lots of great work, both here and in my job and just everywhere. Um, it's really a nice feeling and one that I haven't had in a really, really long time. And yeah, feeling really good. And I also feel like now with that breathing room, I have this space to figure out some things that have like been holding me back or like overwhelming me or making me really anxious. I just needed to feel like I had the space to do that and I finally do. It's still gonna be super busy, but in a different way, which is good. Like I said, it's Saturday morning, we're going out and I am tackling a room that I always put on the wayside, I never give a ton of attention to, and in all honesty, it is the room that I should care the most about. And I wonder if a lot of you also fall into this position. I never, in any of our houses, give attention to my bedroom. It's the place where like extra pieces go. Once in a while I buy something. I'm good at like taking care of bedding, but as far as the actual styling and decorating and the time put into making it a beautiful space, I haven't ever done to a room. And I made the decision that I wanted to bring some character into it, bring some features into it, and like really honor the space and make it beautiful and a place that feels really wonderful. Yeah, it's the place I've ignored in every house that we've lived. And if you're following me on Instagram, I'm doing a lot more content over there, like in a big way. We, this week, we did two house tours. We toured our first house, and I gave some commentary on some decorating style choices I used to make. And then uh, house two, I also took you on a tour on, and you actually saw where the transition of my style started to take place. It was lots of fun. You guys had so much positive feedback around it. We're gonna do more fun content like that in the future, and I'm really excited about what's happening over on Instagram. If you're not, make sure you're following me. Also, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. We DIY, we talk about planning and organizing, we cook, we do all the things here. So this is a space where you're gonna be able to connect with something. And ultimately, the thing that I hope you connect above all is just love, kindness, and positivity, because like this is what the community here is all about. So let's get to Target. Let's see if I find any jumping off points as far as a color palette. I have one in my brain. I just don't know how committed I am to it. But yeah, let's jump in, see what happens, and let's make the bedroom a place that gets the same attention as the rest of the house. We are home. I was wearing a hat. My hair looks crazy right now. I'm gonna show you what I picked up. So in the garage is all my lumber. I'm gonna show you my plan in a little bit. I grabbed these um, candlesticks from Studio McGee. I've had them before. I also grabbed these two boxes as accent pieces and also to put remote controls in um, so they're hidden. And then I did grab a frame. This is for something completely different. Grab my paint supplies and then what I've decided, I don't know if the sample is here. I actually think I threw the sample in my pocket. The wall is going to be this Acacia Haze because it matches this comforter that's going to be on the bed. Um, we're going to switch out the Sunday Citizen bedding just because that's very heavy and very winter. And as it gets warmer, I want like a lighter comforter. So now it is about going and moving all of the things from the bedroom. Like I said, my wood, I buy the pine boards. They are right there. I'm telling you, Lumber, I know there's been lots of reports on it. It's getting so expensive. So, yeah, shop around, see what you can do, but lumber is getting super expensive. All right, I'm going to start clearing out the bedroom and then I'll take you guys up there once I get that done and tell you about the design. So I have my work clothes on and I just cleared out the bedroom. So, 
right now I just have everything pulled out and I like wiped all my baseboards, swept everything, and it's all clean. So I'm creating an accent wall along this wall. Also, I had a black backing on my headboard and it left a mark on this wall. So I'm gonna make sure to not have my headboard against the wall anymore. It's really strange. Um, the fabric definitely transferred over, so I'm just gonna be really careful. So this is the design I'm going with. And some of it you won't see because it'll be covered by furniture, but that's okay because if I ever rearrange, it'll be done right. So I'm gonna have a board running the whole way across here, and I'm actually going to take it higher than the headboard, which is the goal. And I'm gonna kind of frame out a vintage picture I have, which I have to go grab again. So the picture will be hanging like in these centers, and then we'll have some coming down and then staggered in between, some coming below. Just gotta get all my measurements and get working. It's so easy. I'm gonna use my brad nailer. I'm using pine board. It was a little bit more pricey, but I really like working with it just because it does a good job. That's what I use in the pantry. All right, I'm gonna start getting some things together. First board is up and it literally took me a couple minutes. Um, it's about nine feet long. And now I wanna use two boards that are gonna frame out either side of that picture. And then I have one coming down here. So my bottom ones are longer and that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be perfectly the same length. And then I have to cut two to finish it off. So it's all one finished wall. It's gonna look so good when it's done. I have the whole top done and I actually am kind of liking the idea of not putting the bottom slats even though I bought all the materials for it just because I don't know if it's worth it and I can save it for another project because the only place it would go is in that little section under the window, which is covered by the nightstands. And then these three sections here, but like you're going to see like four inches of it because of the headboard. And also you have like the swivel lamps. I think I might just do it this way. I don't know, I'm just gonna sit with it for a second. It is all done. I ended up not doing these two little sections. The tables are gonna be there, it just doesn't make sense. And then I did paint some swatches. I am in love with the color and it's gonna be the same as the comforter. It's just gonna be so beautiful and feel so put together. This is all gonna get redone. This little section over here I'm gonna do some things to. I just wanna make it feel like it's a complete room. It just has felt really mod podgy for a long time. So I'm excited to like elevate it. Alrighty. Need to let all the joints dry and then go in and sand and then we'll tape off and paint. But that's where we're at. Hey friends, it is now Sunday morning and I didn't film a whole lot Saturday just because trying to film this took double or triple the time and this was a bigger project but it's done and I'm gonna show it to all of you and talk you through all of it, but I'm really, really excited with how it turned out. I think it is such a reflection of the rest of the home. The only thing is the curtains that are up currently are not the ones, we've actually ordered new ones. These ones from West Elm have been really great, but after six years, they're really faded on the underside. They were great curtains though. I, I have no complaints other than it's time for them to transition out. <laughs> but I'm gonna walk you around the bedroom, show you how I finished styling it, what it looks like, all of those things, but I'm thrilled with it. And I think it's such a reflection of our home and it made me realize that like the bedroom should not be the last thing on our radars as far as our houses, but I think it's because we're the only ones that see it. We end up neglecting it, but this feels like such a sanctuary, somewhere where I would come to sit to read a book and relax, which it wasn't that before. It also feels so much bigger. So I'm gonna go back to the door and then we're gonna walk through. So this is now when you enter the master bedroom. I mean, I'm so happy with it. So let's start with the rug. This is actually the larger version of the rug that all of you love that is in my pantry, that is in my laundry room. I always get comments on it, but this is the eight by 10 version of it. Once again, this rug is kind of the anchoring point for my whole house. But the one color I was missing from it, I have a lot of rust, I have the oranges, I have the tans, I have the grays, I have a lot of the black. 
but I haven't really pulled in the blue from this rug. It's kind of like a bluish green. It's hard to tell from this, but this was kind of like the jumping off point that also helps keep the house really cohesive. So then let me take you to the accent wall. So this is the accent wall. I chose to not run a molding across the top only because I didn't want that many horizontal lines. So I have the one going across and then the ones staggered at the top and then staggered in between them at the bottom. I'm absolutely obsessed with this color. It's called Acacia Haze from Sherwin-Williams. It matches the comforter flawlessly, but it still works as a neutral. So that is how I got this greenish blue incorporated into the house. I might find some other places to accent it. My walls are uh, Northern Cliffs by Benjamin Moore. Most of the paint in my house is Benjamin Moore, but I'm really starting to love working with Sherwin-Williams. My two swivel nightstand lights are by West Elm. These goosenecks are amazing. So when I'm reading at night, I will swivel it over while I'm reading, and then I like to keep them kind of swiveled over the nightstand to light that. These candlesticks are Studio McGee. These tables are so heavy, so solid. They are also by West Elm. I love mixing styles. So I have a very traditional headboard. I have mid-century modern tables. I have vintage pieces throughout. That's just my style. That's what I really like. This comforter is from that new brand, um, Kaledia, Kaled I don't even remember what the name is, but it's linen, so it will wrinkle a little bit more, but that's okay. This picture, it's from an antique store that we went to in Bedford, Pennsylvania. I just fell in love with it. There was no rhyme or reason. I love the warmth with the white dog. So I actually built the molding to make sure that it would center right in that middle frame. That helps pull in all the warm tones from the rug. Then over here, this table is from West Elm. This chair, I believe, is from West Elm many years ago. We've had this now to, from in a couple houses. It also repeats the nail trim that is on the headboard. This stool is from Target. I like that it's very linear, which also helps tie in the linear grid pattern of the molding. And then over here, it's a really simple setup. I have a vintage paint by numbers. I love how a paint by numbers looks like a Studio McGee vase. This candle I picked up at Target is the same color as the wall, and I just thought, how fitting. I did give this table a coat of Urbane Bronze by Sherwin-Williams, a box of blankets. This, I actually cut a hole in the back of this chest, and it houses all of the equipment for the TV. Then a Studio McGee artificial plant. I just love, like, the organic, like, on rolly shape of this. A stack of books, a little limestone link, and then a floor lamp. And then over here, I think something is going to end up like a bigger piece of furniture in this location. Right now I'm just filling it with a bench to see how I like that. And these shelves are very, very simple. Just all these are from Goodwill. This is from an antique store. This is a vintage piece of wool that I just framed. I love the texture it adds. This is one of the pictures I bought from the antique store. It's a beautiful oil painting on board. These are Studio McGee. This is a vintage Anne of Green Gables book that was gifted to me by a subscriber. I keep it right here. And then some other Goodwill candlesticks. But that's how it's shaped up. I also love that all of this helps pick up the really warm tones of the wooden countertop in our bathroom, but like, I couldn't be happier with how this room turned out. I mean, it feels like a retreat. And I mean, sitting in that chair and being able to look at that, oh, I love it. So, a question I've been getting a lot is how is the pantry holding up and how do I like the functioning? First of all, our bench came, it's from Studio McGee. I love it. I'm still waiting for our hooks. But I will tell you friends, the pantry is holding up beautifully. It's been three weeks now. I use it constantly. We are always pulling things out and in and it is just amazing the baskets are working out really well i think the game changer is putting the felt liners on the shelves but it has 
withstood these first couple weeks, which is a really good sign. I'm really happy with it. It's beautiful. I mean, I also just love the fact that you don't see everything when you walk by. It feels very clean and yeah, it's working out really well for us. Also, these baskets have been a game changer. They're very, very nice to have, but absolutely loving it. In other news, a couple of you had suggested this when I first made this table. So I built this table a while ago. You can go over to my Instagram and check it out. I also think it's in a vlog. But someone suggested painting it black, and at first I was like, no, no, no. But as the houses come together, I definitely decided to do so. Um, it's drying, all the coats are done. Uh, I just put a coat of polyurethane just to keep it really nice and sealed. Once it's done, I'll put it back upstairs in the hallway. But all is well, little house projects happening. And the other thing that happened today, we have a Bubba sleeping on the step. And this is probably gonna make him run down here. But I had known when I first painted the front door yellow, I knew I didn't nail the color right away. Like I knew that. So I had mentioned you guys, I wanted to doll it down a little bit, but still keep the yellow cause I love it. This is B by Sherwin Williams. It's the exact color I wanted. And yeah, I'm just waiting to find the perfect wreath for the front door, but this is a much better yellow than it was originally. Not that the other one was bad, just wasn't right. So that's what's happening on this Sunday. Also totally agree that black was the right way to go at this table for those who suggested it. I was reluctant, but you were right. I'm really, really happy with it. Everything pops a little bit more. Yeah. Good call, everyone.